to um, also introduce you now to Dr. Corey Green. Corey's the lead fishery scientist uh, uh, with us. He completed his PhD in 2011, and uh, he's also an adjunct associate professor at Deakin. He's completed research in tracking species like mako shark, kingfish, calamari, spider crabs, etc. Corey's he's mad keen fisherman and in his own words, spends way too much time and money on fly fishing. I agree, like, you know, five dollars is too much time and money on fly fishing. <laughs> uh, Corey will be discussing the findings of his project, studying cod movements up and down the rivers and into large lakes. Uh, they've been fitted with electronic tags, but let's let him tell us about it. Welcome, Corey. Thanks very much, Gus, and uh, welcome all. Um, as Gus said, I love, I love my fishing and you know, starting off as a young kid I wanted to learn more and more about how to catch my fish and so that led me down to the science, that science field. It hasn't really worked, I know a little bit about science but it doesn't really help me catch fish sometimes. Um, so as Gus said, this, is, this project started around, which one have I got? That one. This project started around 2002 and trying to get a bit of an idea of where our Murray cod move. You know, we're talking about a fish, obviously you've seen such photos around, uh, you know, five and a half million stocks since, uh, since 1990. You know, and we're certainly reaping the rewards, particularly in Lake Eildon. Um, they're big, they're big cod, and everybody wants to catch big cod. You know, fish over 1.3 metres, you know, huge things. Pull really hard, people want to catch them. But um, how do you catch them? That's probably one of the biggest things I wanted to know. How to catch some of these fish, like all the other fish that I tried to target. You know, you learn on the job. You go out with clubs, you go out with members, you look at YouTube, Facebook, read books, look at science, all these social networks and all that sort of stuff, trying to build that information. You think, yep, yeah, I've got it sorted. I know how to catch one. So you go out there and, yeah, this can often... <laughs> This can often happen. That can happen quite a lot. Everybody's laughing because everybody's sort of had that experience before. Yeah. So you know that they're there, but you just don't catch them. And why? And fishers, fishers are funny lots, they are. We're, we're funny people. Yeah. We want to... We, we blame it on the season. We blame it on temperature, air pressure. It's going down. The moon phase is wrong. Yeah, bait type, that's wrong. Lure type, stocking. Let's blame it on the management. Uh, fishing pressure and skill. It's coming. There it is. So why aren't I catching any? Where are they? And are they even there in the first place? So that's where this comes into tracking animals. And yeah, it's all very good to have terrestrial animals like your kangaroos or, or something on, you know, jumping around the mountain. There's six kangaroos there, they're hopping around, you count them, they're half a male, half a female, some are going this way, some are going that way. But for, um, for, for fish, you know, we got that. And so our Murray cod could be going from one place to another, they could be stationary, or they might be going vertically through that water column. But as you know, being cod fishers, that's what we typically see. So where are they? Well, historically, you know, tagging, tagging works really well. These are the, the little T-bar tags that you might have uh, seen in fish and you caught them. They've got a little number on them. We use them for identification, growth, look at population dynamics, look at their distribution, see where they moved. And they've been a real asset to the, to the scientists over the years. That's it there, just that little green tag. They come in different colours. So some tagging that's occurred in the past has been, you know, there's been a, a cod that's travelled 1,500 k's along the Murrumbidgee, massive amount of distance. That's along a river. But what about our cod that have gone in, into to Lake Hilden, where our massive cod are? Well, this one was caught by Andy Smith back in 2018. It was four and a half kilos, you know, around that 63 centimetres. And he tagged it in the, in the green there and he recaptured it some 211 days later, about 11 k's uh, up the stream in that Jamison Arm. 
So you figure, geez, it's gone a fair way, but has it really? Is that, has it gone that way? It might have done that. And then been recaptured. We just don't know using these sorts of tags. So that's when we get into looking at acoustic tags. So I've got one in my pocket here. They're pretty small. You probably won't see that up the back. And they're electronic. And they can capture the tag number, you know, the date, the depth of the fish, the temperature where it's been swimming, and even how fast it's swimming through the water in that acceleration, in that burst, like when it's feeding. And these tags, they send out a pulse. They send out a, a pulse of frequency to carry that data through, and it's picked up by one of these. This is a receiver or a listening station. All right, and so within 300 metres, that data can come and feeds in and downloads into this listening station. And we capture that. So then it's up for, for us to, to download this data to see what we've got. So this project was focused in, in uh, the Jamison Arm of, of Lake Eildon. And we had 16 of these listening stations uh, covering 32 k's from both the lake all the way up, up, to, tu up to Tunnel Bend there, up at... Uh, up at the Upper Goulburn, Upper Goulburn River. So, and a big thank you to the recreational anglers that have helped th with this project is that, you know, we use recreational techniques as well as electrofishing techniques to capture some of these fish. So it was just a matter of anaesthetising the animal, putting a, and uh, putting this small tag inside and then suturing it up. And then putting one of those little small T-bar tags in as well for identification. And then we come to release. Now we've got uh, some members here who've helped uh, release these beautiful creatures. So we just wait till they wake up a little bit. And off they swim. So what do we do? Well, we, ta we had 20 tags. We were able to tag 19 of them. Some of the tags were capture depth and acceleration, the other ones capture depth and temperature. Then we wait. We have to wait for these fish to do their thing so we can download these receivers that are in the water. But it doesn't always go to plan. You're probably well aware from being up here that in 2022 we had those massive rains come down. And it flooded and we lost a lot of those listening station receivers. But we still captured a lot of data. So what do we tag? What are the results? Well, we received 13, uh, thir 13 uh, pieces of... I'll start that again. <laughs> we received data from 13 fish all up out of those 19. The other ones were lost. We couldn't find them. And that meant one and a half million records of information to decipher. Some of the cod we found stayed resident. They didn't move. They found, they've got their hole. They didn't move. Some fish moved quite a lot. One fish we took from up the river and we translocated it down into the lake to see what it does. So what do we find? Now I'll try to run you through this, this ugly piece of rainbow chart here. What we have along the bottom is from January all the way to December. So that's our months or days even. And here's hour of the day moving up the top. This is midnight, midday, back to midnight again. We found that cod are less active during the warmer months. Okay, this is excel. Oops, I'll go back. The dark blue is where they're sitting, doggo. They're not moving too much. They're not accelerating and bursting. So this is burst speed is like fish feeding, you know, attacking. So they're sitting doggo during the cooler months, but big acceleration did occur. So they're still feeding, they're still doing stuff. They're more active during the warmer months. But they're most active around that dusk till dawn. Right. Still active during the day, but most active during that dusk and dawn. So maybe, I don't know, fish from dusk to dawn increase your chances a little bit. Maybe a tip, maybe that's what you do. The depth, these are the, no point looking at the depth of a, a Murray cod in a river because it's only shallow anyway. So we looked at the depth of Murray cod occurring in Lake Eildon. 
Same sort of chart, month along the bottom, time of day from you know, midnight, midday to midnight again. They preferred deep, they were found deeper in cooler months. So I've got the dark air, whoops, the darker areas are those deeper, deep where they've gone deep. But especially during the day. So in the morning, they're up in the shallows. During the day, they're down deeper. And shallower in the warmer months as well. And that could be a sign of them moving up into these arms a little bit into shallow water, which is what I'll get into in a minute. Funny enough, we didn't find... Whoops, I locked, no, knocked over my little listening station. Funny enough, we didn't see anything with our... No, vis, nothing visual with our preferred temperature. Not much. All right, so this is where we start looking at a little bit of the environmental variables. Again, along the bottom, we've got February 2022 to February 2024. And this is the river height coming down that uh, upper Goulburn. Not much height, then we start getting floods coming in. All these peaks, peaks and troughs. Around summertime, not much water flowing down. Then we start getting the peak again. And I've got this beautiful chart that explains everything that'll solve how to catch fish. Not quite, but it certainly unlocks a little bit. And I'm gonna keep this simple. Imagine the junction being that area between the lake interface and the river interface. The further out into the lake, 12, oh, sorry, further out to the lake, 12 k's out, up the river, 12 k's up the river. And here's our cod. So during this May-June period, it was more in the lake, and then in August, start moving up the arms. And it started doing that as soon as we found that first rain. Down into the lake, first rain, start moving up into those arms again. So we're seeing, for the majority of the fish we caught, we saw this sort of movement, this average sort of movement of moving in and moving out. Resident fish, these are the fish that aren't moving. And here's our fish. He was up the river a little bit, and he just, for the entire study, he just stayed in the river. Didn't go anywhere. He was happy. And remember I talked about the fish that we caught in the river and relocated it back down. We let that go in the Jamison, at the Jamison boat ramp. So here's in the river. We caught it up the river. We threw it in the back of the truck. Down we go to the lake at Jamison boat ramp, let it go. And then it went through the lake and then it went all the way and it stayed back and went straight back to its home, exactly to where it came from. Pretty fascinating stuff, I reckon. So where are they during the month of the year? Here we got you know, January to June all the way up the top, July to December on the bottom. The darker the spot, means there's more fish in that area. The lighter the spot, less fish in that area. So, during these uh, February, March, all the way to June, they're sort of in the lake area. But then, then, when we start having a look further down into that September, October, November, they're certainly pushing into the arms. And you're probably gonna find that with other areas of Eildon as well. So what does it mean? How does this all look? How does this all look? Well, here's a bit of an animation of what's happened. You'll see on the left, we've got where our cod are, and you'll see little dots here. You'll see that will move. We've got Lake Eildon here, a chart of Lake Eildon, and a chart of the Goldman. And this will be the temperature and the depth uh, of, of uh, those heights there. So here we start with all our cod moving up and down into the arm system. You know, it's going through June here. Remember June, they're more out in this lake area. Then we're starting to get more fish moving up into the river. And they're certainly pushing a fair way up. Not many, but just a few. We had temperature spikes. All our river heights are going up and down. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot to try to interpret in this. Here's our translocated cod. We caught that. We caught that fish there. 
as I said, down in the car, we tagged it and released it back down there. So it's not in its home at all. So what did it do? Well, it just raced around the lake a little bit. It found its, then eventually it found its bearings. I thought, ah, I know where I am and I know where I've got to go. And it went back there and for the remaining year of the project, it stayed there and it's probably still there now. So then we combined all this you know, environmental data. Remember how I was talking about, oh, it's the pressure, it's the temperature, it's all that sort of stuff, the depth's wrong. So we thought, well, let's throw that all in. So we did, we captured river height, day length, air pressure, moon phase, heights, water temperature, and we did some environmental modelling. So we threw that into the laptop, wrote a you know, thousand code, um, lines of code, threw it into the old supercomputer and away we went. So what did it tell us? Simple as that. What did it tell us? Well, we got all these charts and all this sort of stuff happening. I'll get to you in a minute. Yep. All these charts, all this stuff happening. Still lots to do, still lot to do. but we, in summary, we found that all, in, all fish are individual, but we did find significant trends of some of these fish too. Some fish are resonant, some fish move, but the first big rain signifies the beginning of the movement up into the arms. Not so much into the river, but up into the arms. And September to February, they reach that upper, that they reach those arms. Acceleration was greatest. This is like, acceleration is like feeding. Greatest when it's around 20 degrees, at around 6 a.m. And a, and a stable low river height in warm temperatures. And it's lowest at 8 degrees and 12 p.m. Depth, in the lake, not the river. They're at their shallowest between 12 p.m. and 5 a.m. 6 a.m. seems to be the biggest, the, the deepest, oh sorry, shallowest, and that's particularly in summer. And the deepest between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. And mainly in winter. Other variables like barometric pressure, moon phase, we, didn't, we couldn't pinpoint moon phase or barometric pressure to say, yep, that's the driving factor when they're feeding. But they are significant when you incorporate all these other variables as well. All right, there's a number of people, John Five, Craig, Yuri, all the fisheries team that I'd like to acknowledge. Um, we've had a lot of help from you know, Mick Caulfield as well and the Dunlop Angling Club. The Jamison community was sensational. Uh, Brett Ingram for his knowledge and expertise. That's our computer programmer guy, he's just a legend. But a massive thank you to this guy here. That's my son who went out and caught his, never been cod fishing before, and Craig went down and got his uh, one. So he was there for 20 minutes and he got one that was a metre, metre three. So a big thank you to him, he's a champion. Thanks very much. Gus, we've got a question down here. Do we take that now? We'll take no, that we'll to take the that. panel. Yep. Thank you.